Hello and welcome to our today's session. We are going to be looking at decision making statements in C programming. Life is full of decisions and we are always given the option of making a choice of the decision that we set on. For instance, it's a decision that we make when we wake up, it's a decision to come to school that you make, it's a decision that you have made to study hard in school so that you're able to get a good grade, it's equally a decision that you have made to watch this particular video. If you look at the video we have, the, sorry, the picture we have to our right, we have a security guard who is checking anyone who is getting in. So it means it's not each and every person who can pass through. There is a security check and it's on the basis of that security check that will determine whether someone will be let through or not. Again, if you look at the ID, which is uh, normally used within our country, it's not each and every person who is granted a national ID. There is a decision that needs to be made. We have to check that you have met the year threshold, that is you are 18 years and above. We have to confirm that indeed you are a Kenyan by birth, and so on and so forth. In programming, there are situations where we might need to equally make decisions. For instance, if you look at this particular portal, which is normally used by students when they are confirming their KCSE results, a user will be expected to enter their username, they will equally be expected to enter their password. However, it's not automatic that when you enter your username and your password, then you have to log in. There is a decision that has to be made. And the decision of allowing you to log in will be on the basis of your fulfillment of putting a correct username and putting a correct password. That is what is going to grant you access into this particular portal so that you can be able to see your results. So when we talk of decision-making statements, we are simply referring to those statements that are used to make decisions on the basis of conditions. And so it's not in all situations where a program executes in a linear flow, in this given case, that the program executes in the manner in which it has been written. There are certain instances where we may alter or we may control the flow of execution. And the flow of execution can be altered on the basis of a condition that we have provided. For example, imagine a program that's supposed to assess whether someone is supposed to get an ID or not, where in this particular case, the age is the requirement. So we may have a program that prompts a user to enter their age. And so if the age is above 18 or it's 18 and above, then we are going to allow this uh, person to proceed with the application for an ID. However, if we realize that the age entered is below 18, then we are going to terminate that process. The person may not be able to proceed further to the next step. So you can see in this given case, the condition has influenced the flow of execution. We normally have uh, different types of uh, decision-making uh, statements. On a broader level, we normally have the if-else and the switch. However, the if-else is normally subdivided into a number of subcategories, which we shall be looking at in a short while. One is called the if condition. The next one is called the if else condition. Then that one is called the if else if condition. And the last one is normally referred to as the nested if condition. Then on the other hand, we have said that broadly we have the if else and the switch. So today we are going to be looking at the if condition, the if else condition, the if else if condition. 
Now the nested if is not uh, preferred because of uh, its nature of the complexity and alternative to it users are always preferred to use what you refer to as the switch. When you're dealing with conditions within a decision making statements, there are certain operators which you refer to as the relational operators that we are going to be coming across. Because an example we have given when we are assessing the age, whether the age is greater or, or is 18 years and above. So we need to know which operators do we use when we are assessing the condition within our decision making statements. And these are some of the most commonly used relational operators. The first one is what referring to as greater than. And so when a condition is true, that means that a particular statement needs to be executed. So you have given an example here. Is 5 greater than 4? And that statement, of course, is true. Then we have the less than, which is represented in this given case. Then we can ask ourselves, is 4 less than 5? Which is true. Then we have this other operator, which is the greater than or equal to. For instance, we might ask if age is greater than or equal to 18. That means any value entered from 18 and above is going to be termed as true. So even if someone enters 18, that's still going to be termed as true. Then we have less than or equal to. In this given case, we are asking ourselves whether 3 is less or equal to 4, which again turns out to be true. Then this is what we normally refer to as the equal to. You can see the presence of two assignment operators, which becomes now the equal to. And you might ask ourselves, is 5 equal to 5? Which in this given case is true. Now, the opposite of that, when you want to assess not equal to, we normally use an exclamation mark and an assignment operator. That becomes not equal to. And we might ask ourselves, is 5 not equal to 4? Which is true, 5 is not equal to 4. Similarly, we have another category of uh, operators, which we refer to as a uh, logical operators now logical operators is used in scenarios where we may want to test more than one particular condition and there are normally three of them the first one is normally referred to as the logical and which in this given case ensures that uh, the two conditions that we are testing have to be true for the execution to take place then the other one which normally uses pipe operator is normally referred to as the logical or this is normally used when either one of the condition is true or both the conditions are true. So, so long as one of the condition becomes true, it's going to execute. Then the last one we normally refer to as the logical not, which is normally used to inverse uh, a statement so that in, in, this, in this given case, for instance, In this case, for instance, we can see that we are saying that uh, 6 is equal to 3, which of course is false, but we negate that and uh, we make it to be true by putting an exclamation mark. So it's used to inverse. If it's a true statement, it's used to inverse it to, be, to, be, to make it false and vice versa. Thank you for watching and I look forward to seeing you in the next lesson.